a lot of Americans been consuming water, but I wonder what it's like to compare it to India. That's right, I'm going to be comparing water supplies and consumption in Surat, India. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this video, I decided to do my data analysis project on water consumptions in Surat, India. And this is something I've been interested in showing with you. I'm also going to be showing you some applied multivariate statistical analysis, including principal component analysis and factorial analysis. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so here's the project that I worked on. The title of my project is Assessing Water Supply and Consumption Patterns in Surat, India. And this is a zone-wise analysis. And the reason I decided to do this project is to gain insights into the water supply and consumption patterns in different wards in Surat, which can help in understanding the efficiency and adequacy of water management in the city. Another is to identify any discrepancy between water supply's capacity and actual usage, which can indicate issues like wastage and efficiency or potential areas of water scarcity. And finally, it's better for me to provide data-driven recommendations for better resource allocations and planning for water supplies, ensuring that all needs receive adequate water based on their needs. So here is where I got the data set and the software I use. Where I got it from was this website called Data Open Government Data Platform India. And Open Government Data Platform India is an Indian website, and I didn't know this, I just found out about this, is to provide public access to various data sets which are generated by ministries, departments, and organizations of India. And I find it quite useful when I looked it up. And this website also has many sectors and categories, including education, science, technology, water supplies, and a whole lot more. And if you know, here's the data set where I got it from. Yeah, here's, it shows the first, I just showed the first five full four, four rows. Here you can see the columns are city names, zone names, ward names, ward number, water supply capacity, water usage, and percentage of areas with water supply network. And for the description, for the zone name, the name of the zone, it's the, basically the name of the zone within the city, and it specifies it's the particular zone within the, ci the city for more local localized analysis and we have the also the ward name which is the name of the ward within the zone and it provides further granality within the zone allowing for a detailed assessment of specific areas and we also have the ward number which is a numerical identifier for the ward we also have the water capac supply capacity which is the total capacity of water supplies available per day in liters for the ward it also indicates the maximum amount of water that can be supplied in the war daily. And then the water usage of domestic water consumption is the actual amount of water consumed per day in liters within the ward. And it reflects the daily water consumption, which is essential for analyzing usage patterns and identifying potential overuse and underuse. And finally, we have the percentage age of area with water supply network, which shows the percentage of the ward area that is covered by the water supply network. And it shows the extent of water supply coverage, which is a crucial for evaluating the reach and effectiveness of the water distribution in fractures. And the, I also used Excel, R, and Tabulum. So here's my storytelling I wanted to show with you. In an effort to address the growing challenges of water supplies management in Surat, India, I embrace on a comprehensive project aimed at uncovering trends and discrepancies in water usage across various zones. I began my journey with a detailed data set for structured storage. To extract meaningful patterns and relationship between the data, I perform a rigorous factor analysis using R. Revealing critical insights into the correlations between water supply capacity and daily usage. An analysis pointed out key factors that significantly impact water consumption, providing a foundation for more targeted interventions. And to further illustrate these findings, I turned, a t t turned to Tableau, creating a vivid dashboard visualization including dull bar charts, line charts, and scatter charts. The combination of these tools enabled me to not only understand the current water management landscape in Surat, but also to forecast future needs and propose actionable recommendations. 
So the first question I want to ask is, how do water supply capacities and domestic water consumption patterns vary across various zones in Surat, India, and what factors contribute to discrepancies in water distribu distribution and usage efficiency? And the purpose is to analyze the distribution and consumption of water across various zones in Surat, India. And by examining the water supply capacity, domestic water consumption, and the percentage of area covered by the water supply networks, the project aims to identify patterns in disparity in water distribution. Understanding these patterns will help in assessing the efficiency of water usage, identifying zones with potential water supply issues, and providing insights for improving water management practices to ensure the equable and efficient distribution of water resources in Surat. And I thought Surat is a rapidly growing, growing city with diverse water needs and challenges across its wards. And I'm going to provide you an in-depth analysis of how the different wards vary in terms of water supply capacity, water usage, and the percentage of areas covered by the water supply network. And how do the various wards and sorts vary in terms of water supply capacity, water usage, and the percentage of area covered by the water supply network, and the, what are the key factors driving these variations. So here I will be provide you using a principal component analysis using R. And it's basically, a principal component analysis is a popular tool used in multivariate analysis in statistics. So here's the code that I wrote. You can see, here's I put the columns as numeric. I used the factor minor, factor extra in the library to imp to load the data sets. And then I have my principal component analysis as my code. And here's the output. And I want to show you based on the graphs. So first here, we have the principal component analysis graph of individuals. And the graph shows on the axis, you see the dimensions for 68%. And dimensions two is for 32 percent and each point represents a ward in surat and their positions are determined by their scores on the two principal components and for clustering of wards the wards that are close together on the plot have similar characteristics in terms of water supply capacity water usage and percentage of areas with a water supply network and for variations among war for variations among wards the spread of points indicate the variability among the wards and a widespread of Dimension 2 suggests significant differences in water supply capacity and usage. And the high coverage wards are wards that are positioned higher than Dimension 1's, have a higher percentage of area with the water supply network. And here's the principal component analysis of variables. And this graph shows the loading of the original variables on the two principal components. And the arrows represent the directions and magnitude of each variable's contributions to the components. And you can see the variables, water usage, liters a day, and capacities of liters per day down here are strongly aligned with dimensions two, indicating that they contribute significantly to the variability captured by the dimension. And the variable age percent water supply is more aligned with dimension one, showing independent contribution to the variability captured by dimension one. And the angles between the arrows indicate the correlations between variables. And we can see that water usage liters per day and capacity liters per day are highly correlated as they are almost parallel. So you can see based on the graph there. And here's the third graph of the output I want to show you. It's called the principal component analysis biplot. And the biplot combines the information from the principal component analysis graph of individuals and the, these basically these two graphs. And it shows both the individual wards and principal component analysis and it shows both the individual wards and the variables on the same plot you can see here there's all the here's everything the, the vectors and everything's here and we see that the factors contributing to variability are the water supply capacity and the water usage and these are the primary factors contributing to the variability in dimensions too and we can see that they are highly correlated and they represent the bulk of the variations and the percentage of the area, we can see that that the variations is somewhat independent of the two variables. And the high capacity of usage wards that score high on dimension two have a significant water supply capacity of usage. And these might be larger or more densely populated areas. 
And then the high coverage wards, the wards that score, have a higher percentage of their area covered by the water supply network. And these areas might have a better infrastructure of policies ensuring widespread water supplies. So you can see, we can see that it all works out. And now here's another factor analysis using our, this is another multivariate analysis I wanted to show you. And the question is, what are the underlying factors influencing the water supply capacity and usage in different wards of Surat? And how can these factors help in optimizing the allocation of water resources? So I thought this would have been in interesting to show you. And here's the code that I use. I use psych, dplar, fim, which is visualizing NA factors. And I convert the numerical calls for factor analysis. The, here's the alpha for factor analysis. And here's the output. And on the left, I want to show you each one. So we can see that the, we have the output and the standardized loading patterns matrix. Upon these, we can see we have the capacity, liters per day, water usage a day. MR per, and the percentage area of water supply, MR1, MR2. And MR1 and MR2 are the factor loadings representing the correlations between the variables and the factors. And the high values indicate the variables is strongly associated with the factors. So we can see that capacity liters per day and water usage liters per day load are heavily on MR1, which indicate that they are strongly associated with the factor. And percentage areas water supplies have the low loadings on both MR1 and MR2 which indicated a weak associations with both factors. And then we can see H2, the communalities represents the proportions of each variable's variances that can be explained by the factors. We see that it's 0 0.997, 0 0.998 for water usage, percentage areas water supply is 0 0.054. We can see that capacity liters per day and water usage liters per day have high communalities, indicating that the factors explain most of the variance. And the percentage areas water supply has low communalities, indicating that the factor explained very little of its variance. And U2 uniqueness has the has the represents the proportion of variance in each variable that is not explained by these factors. And having very having incredibly low uniqueness uniqueness indicating that most of the variance is explained by factors. And you can see down here, we have all the loadings here, 0 0.02. These are the sum of the square loadings. We also have the proportion factors, which represents the proportion of the total variance explained by each factor. The cumulative variance, we also have that. The proportion explained and the cumulative proportions. And then F, and we have the root mean squares of residuals. We have, means a measure of the fit of the model, with a lower value indicates a better fit, which is zero. And then the Tucker-Lewis index, which is a measure of model fit. So the TLI is, we can see that's 2.12, which is unusually high, indicating potential usage with the model due to the small numbers of variables or other factors. And we can see the measures of the score adequacy, which is the correlations of regressions, correlations. See, MR1 is 1, MR2 is 0.67. We can see also MR1 is the multiple R squared of scores with factors are 1 and 0.44. And the minimum correlations of possible factor scores are 0.99 and point, negative 0.12. And the factor analysis also reveal a capacity of liters per day and water usage that are closely related to predominantly explained by a single factor in MR1. And the water supply does not fit well into this factor model, indicating that the variance is largely unexplained by the factors identified. And the diagram here is a visual representation of the results from the factor analysis. And the interpretations of the factor analysis diagrams indicate that the factors identified for MR1 is that the factor is significantly associated with both water usage liters per day and the capacities of liters per day. And this factor appears to have no significant, for MR2, they have a significant association between each other. And for MR2, there's, the factor appears to not have a significant associations. But the arrow from, whoopsie, the arrow from MR1 to water usage leads per day and capacities represent stronger factor loadings, indicating that MR1 is a common factor explaining a large portion of the variance in these two variables. And there are no arrows connecting 
percentage water supplies to MR1 or MR2, indicating that the week of neglectable loadings on both factors. And this aligns with the early analysis showing low commodalities for the for these variables. And we see that MR1 is a dominant factor in this analysis, explaining the significant portions of the variance in both water usage liters per day and capacity liters per day. And for weak factors, we can see that MR2 does not play a significant role in explaining the variance of any per any variables in the data set. And unexplained variance are percentage areas water supplies is not well represented by the current factors, suggesting that additional factors or variance might be needed to fully capture its variance. And we can see in here is a dashboard visualization I wanted to show you using Tabla. I use a dull chart, and you can see the title is The Impact of Water Supply Capacity on Water Usage Across Zones in Surat, India. And we can see some trends and discrepancies. And we could also see that we could have a, we have a, we also on the, X axis they have the zones, and then on the Y axis is the water capacity liters per day, and it shows the mesh the, on red shows the lines of water supply capacities of liters per day, and the water, yellow represents the water usage of domestic water consumptions, and right away I can see that the zones Katagran and Una show a significant demand, indicating a potential need for further increasing the water supply capacity of implementing water saving measures. And the central and limited with lower water usage might be more efficient of or have a lower demand. And studying these zones can offer insights into best practices that could apply to other areas. And we can also see that zones with higher usage should be targeted for water conser conservations, conservation initiatives to manage and reduce unnecessary consumptions. And I felt like with zones with higher usage, usage target for cons conservative initiatives that analyzing these zones can provide valuable insights into efficient water management practices and these might include effective leak detection systems usage of smart meters or robust water management policies and the demand demand management understands how these areas maintain lower usage despite having sufficient supply capacities that can help in formulating strategies for high demand zones for example, community, community engagement and conservation efforts or stringent regulations of water usage in industries and commercial establishments. And here's a, I wanted to show you, this is a scatter plot showing the water supply and consumption patterns across Sura zones. And you can see all the zone names and the percentage age of areas with water supply networks. On the X, we have water supply capacities. And on the Y axis, we have water usage. So this is an interesting this is actually my first dashboard visualization I wanted to show you with you. And to wrap things up, I wanted to, to provide you some future conclusions about demand supply analysis. And then future analysis should closely monitor the correlations between population growth and water usage across different zones. For example, zones like Yuna and Kathagran are project, projected to experience high future demands due to rapid population growth and urbanization. And this indicates a need for a proactive adjustment in water supply capacities to meet the increasing demand. And planners should regularly update population growth forecasts and integrate them into water demand models to ensure supply infrastructures, which can keep the pace with changing needs. And then also for infrastructure investments, zones such as Ottawa and Libya currently have lower supply capacities and which may impede their ability to meet future water demands, especially with anticipated population growth or industrial development. And investigating an infrastructure's improvement in these zones is crucial, and this could involve upgrading existing water supply systems, expanding reservoir capacities, or enhancing water distribution networks. And prioritizing these investments can will help to prevent future water shortages and ensure equitable water distribution. For efficiency improvements in zones like Varanja A, where water usage is notably lower despite higher supply capacity efforts should be made to improve water usage efficiency. And this discrepancy suggests that there might be an underlying issue such as inefficiency in the distribution systems, unaccounted for water losses or lower than expected demand. And conducting detailed audits and implementing water saving technologies or practices can help optimize water usage and reduce waste. 
And adaptive water management is a way to develop adaptive plants that account for seasonal variations and projective increases in demand is essential for sustainable water resource management. And these plans should be include creating emergency response strategies for droughts, floods, or other extreme weather events. And additionally, implementing the flexible water allocation strategies that can be adjusted based on real-time data and predictive analytics can enhance the resilience of the water supply systems. And finally, for continuous modeling, establishing a robust system for continuous monitoring of water supplies and usage across all zones is vital, and leveraging IoT sensors and smart meters to collect real-time data will provide valuable insights into water consumption patterns and help data set detect issues promptly. And continuing monitoring will enable dynamic adjustments to water distributions, ensure efficient use of resources, and support timely interventions when abnormalities are detected. And integrating this data will predictive and will predict further enhance the capacity to forecast future trends and response proactive. So thanks for watching my project. I hope this was useful, especially with water consumptions and supplies in Surat, India. And this is also, on the background, I forgot to show you, but this is a whole area here, water consumption supplies in Surat, India. And be sure to subscribe to my channels at John Kim Vlogs. John, I also have another YouTube channel called John Kim Blue School Drawings. Check that out, and also my gaming channel, jkim715.